Thank, thank you, Alexi. That's uh, a lot of food for thought and, and so forth. What we're going to do is take a few questions and uh, only take about uh, enough for about 10 minutes. But I do think there needs to be some questions coming from this uh, panel because of this absolutely vitally important uh, material that has been uh, um, you know, given to us this, uh, this, this morning. All right. Let, let me capitalise on the short question time by asking you both questions. Uh, first, to you, Professor Tolaraya. Uh, with the sanctions on Russia and the economic impact of the collapse of oil, etc., we know that the Russian government has been trying to slash the budget, and you've got challenges like the Far East and developing it. What do you say about the role of the BRICS-related financial institutions in meeting those de um, development challenges, like the New Development Bank, but also the Asian Infrastructure Bank? And what I'm getting at is, here in Australia, we're, joining, we're debating joining the Asian Infrastructure Bank, but one of the biggest powers in Asia is Russia. Is Russia also planning to join it at all? Um, and then secondarily, would you comment on the applicability for Russia today of the Malaysian approach to the 1997 attack on its currency with exchange controls and internally generated credit as well because of your ex expertise in East Asia, the usefulness of the South Korean experience with directed credit for industrial development. And then if I can just give Dr. Murovi some food for thought. Um, just, just some questions. You said that there are no winners in nuclear war, which of course is um, the reassurance that there won't be one. But if one side believes they can win, doesn't that undermine that um, reassurance? And I also wondered if you can comment on the connection between economic crisis and strategic conflict, such as you know, Europe has become more bellicose in terms of NATO as its economy has got worse, and we see that as driving the strategic crisis today. And then finally, just something I've always wondered, um, would you agree that if the West was really serious in taking on challenges such as ISIS in the Middle East, the most effective thing it could do was, would be to reach out to Russia for cooperation? Thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Western sanctions have uh, not that much to do with the current uh, crisis we experience in Russia. Uh, I would say Saudi Arabia is more to blame because they, uh, they uh, want to bring down the price of oil uh, to fight uh, the uh, shale revolution in the US to make to put the shale gas and oil out of business. And that's why they're uh, trying to keep the low oil prices. Well, Russian de economy unfortunately depends on the revenues from oil exports. And therefore, uh, our uh, currency ruble has, fell, has, fell, has fallen two times. In, uh, in, uh, well, that uh, uh, really reminds me of the uh, so-called uh, IMF uh, crisis of 1997 in Southeast Asia, including Malaysia. But in this case, uh, there was a deliberate attack against Russian currency, in, against uh, local uh, Asian currencies. Uh, in Russia's case, ruble is uh, actually tied to the price of oil. So actually, one barrel of oil costs 3,700 rubles approximately. So whenever the fall, uh, the price fell in dollars, the, cur the currency rate of exchange fell accordingly. Uh, and of course, that severely undermines imports, and it uh, also uh, severely undermines the uh, filling up of state budget. Uh, so we have to slash the uh, uh, expenditures, have to uh, close or not to uh, start new projects. And uh, uh, this is all very bad, but. Uh, Unfortunately, we are ourselves to blame because we had at least 20 years to reform our economy and put it on a more, uh, you know, industrial basis. 
uh, on a more uh, productive basis, not just depend on oil and gas exports, but that never happened. Uh, now, th now at least uh, when we have this uh, crisis, the every cloud has a silver lining. I hope that we'll start rebuilding our industry and rebuilding our economy. Um, so uh, sanctions added to that, uh, but at the same time, strangely, sanctions uh, sanctioned uh, uh, did uh, they do help uh, uh, Russian government and President Putin uh, because. If uh, the, the, such a crisis would have resulted just from the wrong economic policies, which, is, uh, which accounts for 90% of the current uh, economic situation, uh, then government and Putin would have been blamed. Now the Western blamed with the sanctions and Ru Russian people are united, will live through hard times, will we'll, uh, we'll break through this uh, economic situation. Uh, so I think, uh, what is it? BRICS. And, BRICS, uh, BRICS uh, trade with BRICS so far uh, plays not a big, ro not a, such a big role. But, uh, of, but now with this in this crisis situation, there are two tendencies. First, uh, we substitute the imports from uh, from Europe uh, by the imports from BRICS, especially uh, uh, that of uh, uh, food and uh, such uh, such fruits and vegetables. And uh, well, consumer goods, uh, fruits, and vegetables come from uh, South Africa or Brazil. Uh, it's easy with the current communication transportation network. Consumer goods come from uh, from uh, China mostly and, and India. So we are reorienting our imports uh, to these countries, and that's good for uh, for them, and it's bad for Europe. But that's the trouble of their own making. Uh, second, um, uh, the uh, investment, uh, Russian capitals are now looking for new lucrative markets in the East. And we are also trying to uh, turn to the East in uh, economics and exporting our pro uh, products to China and East Asia in general. And third, uh, uh, and third uh, uh, we have some uh, uh, more, uh, more mature cooperation finance with these countries. For example, the uh, pool, uh, the reserve, uh, 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 the reserve arrangement for the currency, uh, uh, currency support uh, we now for the BRICS, and actually we are doing, we were doing this with China on a bilateral basis by getting uh, Chinese uh, yuan loans to stabilize our currency and uh, we are doing now the trade with China in yuan and ruble basis, not in US dollars, so that also speeded up this process of integration. Thank you. Oh, uh, I forgot about uh, Asia Development, uh, Asia, Asia uh, in, in Infrastructure Development Bank. We were not planning to, to join this, but now maybe we can reconsider, but it takes some time for Russian government process, at least a year, I think. Okay, I'll, I'll answer your questions in reverse order, starting with ISIL. Um, I mean, the simple answer is ab ab absolutely. I mean, uh, transnational terrorism is, is a global threat, and uh, I think uh, the, the, the Russians published uh, intelligence uh, earlier this year suggesting that uh, out of 40 or something thousand foreign fighters fighting for, fighting for ISIL, about 11,000 come from the former Soviet Union. So whilst we're going ballistic about our um, members, certain members of our community traveling there and bringing hypothetically back home with experience, the Russians and, and other members of the former Soviet community face exactly the same uh, challenge. So in this sense, if we really want to eradicate it, then, then we need to bring, uh, bring all members. Also, even, even with, with regards to what the Russians are doing there, I don't think we really understand the, the, the extent of their, uh, of, of their contribution. I mean, um, uh, before the coalition uh, decided to launch uh, airstrikes on targets in Syria and Iraq, the Russians supplied the Iraqi military with advanced military hardware, including strike aircraft which were, once became operational, were sent into battle immediately and managed the Iraqi military to withhold some of the ISIL offenses, but somehow we just pretend that it's not, it's not happening in this sense. Economic crisis and, 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 and strategic conflict, yeah, there is direct link with that because war is a, is a business. It's a dirty business, but war can, can, can be viewed as a strategic diversion for problems at home. It can uh, also instigate some um, 
some um, elements of the uh, of the industry, natural the defense, uh, the defense industry. So um, and 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 mobilize communities, etc. So. Uh, or, or for that reason, you know, rid of debt, et cetera, you can simply, uh, so it's, I mean, it's been long established that economic crisis contribute to instability and can trigger conflicts. No winners in the nuclear war. Yes, when, when there is a notion of so-called mutual issue destruction, MAD, uh, that's something that both the United States and the Soviet Union came to realization, well, certainly the United States came to realization at the turn of the 70s when the Soviets caught up with them. Uh, however, there is always this uh, inclination to, to achieve superiority. And in this sense, I want to make a reference to uh, President Obama's initiative of achieving so-called global nuclear zero. When he talked about why don't we just strip ourselves of uh, nuclear weapons and weapons of mass destruction. Well, on one hand, it sounds really nice and, 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 and promising, but it, it happens at the time, and, and this is why I can explain why the Russians resisted, because it happens at the time with the United States military developing new generations of conventional system, which would give them same capability um, as, as nuclear weapons without necessarily going, going nuclear. So in this sense, this is a way how to overcome that and achieve superiority. And, 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 and that, that's a, that actually can provoke a, 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 a new arms race, technological arms race, because other powers like Russia, like China, are now seeking to acquire similar, uh, similar capabilities or come up, come up with asymmetric um, uh, response. So currently, we, we live through the period of relative strategic parity, but there is always this um, temptation uh, on, on both sides to, to have a bit of an upper hand because um, whilst I'm, I'm still doubtful that we'll ever see a thermonuclear war, well, if we'll see it, it will be a really short observation. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, certainly, certainly getting the upper hand allows you to engage in political and military blackmail, which continues to remain one of pressure points or mechanisms to, to pursue agendas. Thank you. All right, thanks very much.